my garden. I am Scarlett. This is a big, warm, huge hello, and I'm very sorry I have been missing. It is so exciting that we are in spring. Yay! You have no idea how happy I am. I apologize for all of your lovely comments. I haven't gotten back to you quite as fast as I could have. I've been working on my other channel related to painting and all that fun stuff I do in the winter. So a few things I should probably mention. One, we moved. We have a whole uh, plan that involves moving and doing the allotment and in order to move and not lose all my plants because I had worked so long on them they are all here so we moved all the plants to the allotment again this happened last October November after everything was all done all the leaves had come up my raspberries my rhododendrons uh, my blueberries over here and they're really tight they're really tight right now because this was just really for winter storage. So when we come and as the season starts, I'm going to separate them and they'll all start growing up. My lovely wine stock. Yes, we brought the, the grapes along too. The butterfly bushes, the roses, the peach trees. This huge thing back here, which is so pretty and completely asleep, is the wisteria. And it's budding! Yay! Here we have roses and roses and roses. These are a bunch of rose trees. So this is the South Garden, and I showed you this last year. We brought in the soil and we worked that whole big bed and all that fun stuff. But if you look that way, and you follow me, we have a North Garden too. So over here, if you remember, it's taking down that huge tree, which, um, Yes, it was diseased, it did have problems, and it did actually have to go. It wasn't just us being ridiculous and deciding that we had some right over a tree. We had to take it down. Um, that was that big tree, which is now gone. And these, this is the cherry tree, the pear tree, the apple tree, the Quinton tree. He got a really good haircut last year. He wasn't doing so well, and I hope he's going to grow better this year. But this is the North Garden. So technically and officially, that garden belongs to me, and this one belongs to my husband, Bo, who you've seen already in the last video. He was the one with the big chainsaw. We brought the vertical garden, of course. These are, what is this? These are clematis that used to be all over the huge gazebo in the front. Uh, another clematis, this is a rose. So, and this keeps moving. It really needs to be anchored. We put this huge hole here because we were planning on putting the cottage there. We've now changed our minds on that too. So we're gonna fill it back in and do something else. And over here, I believe, is where I'm going to put a greenhouse pretty soon. We did bring in tons of soil last year and lots of manure and oh, and we even dug out that hole over there which will be a pond for the ducks. Let's go back to the other side. This will be put up. It is not, but I want it to grow up and over. And I'm gonna put like an arbor area here so that you pass under the wisteria. And all this wisteria, this all came from, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> this was the wisteria which was on the carport at our house. So here, come on under. Here we have our little washing up area. And here I'd like to put a little uh, bench. So it's like a little reading corner with the wisteria growing all anyway I've got it completely finished in my head and I don't have a lot of time to do it so it's gonna be a pretty exciting year yeah over here if we walk through the nursery past the tree and the tree nursery this is our huge pile of water there's a really big story that goes with this and it kind of summarizes into the idea that it didn't fit through the gate to get it over here. So we had to lift it and throw it over the fence. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with myself that day. And back here, these are my little baby, my little baby lilacs. And one strawberry. It doesn't look like anything else survived. No, just the lilacs, but I'm pretty impressed that the lilacs did survive. So that's good. They need water though. It has not rained in a while. Um, do you guys see the lilacs I've been starting from tiny seed? Anyway, that's what they look like now. So that'll be cool too. They're going to come out. This is where I keep some of my tools. And this is the back of the neighboring property. Following this way, we are on the south garden right now. And in case you're wondering, each garden is 500 square meters, which is like 5,000 square feet. This is our cherry tree on the south garden. 
and over there is a plum tree. The cherry tree has issues. It's got little nasty buggedy things inside the cherries. And I know that I need to do something now by wrapping tape around the bottom, a form of tape, sticky something with, um, with some kind of spray. I haven't really looked into it, but if I do do that, hopefully we'll be able to eat the cherries when they come out in August. Oh, July. July, yes. They'll be ready around the middle of July. And they're really nice, yummy cherries. I did eat a few last year. This is a lilac. It's a huge lilac bush. I think, I think I'm gonna squish it because it's pretty big and I'm gonna shorten it because the sun comes up over there and I want the sun in the garden, but it's really beautiful. So I won't do that until later. And I'm also harvesting, like transplanting a whole bunch of these little guys. You can totally take out the little babies that grow from your lilacs and then move them around. But you know what? We will cover that in a different video. Okay, and speaking of other things that I did last year, this is a onion bed that looks pretty good. Onions take 10 months, nine to 10 months to grow. So you have to do them over an entire season. So this little line of onions is coming along and I suspect that the rabbits might have gotten to the rest of them because I don't see very many others in here. But these are definitely doing well. Under here I used to have broccoli. I don't think it survived the winter, but it was doing pretty well last year. And way over there is my garlic bed. Good for keeping away colds and the walking dead. And it smells so lovely. So you can take this garlic, break off the greens, and throw it in a salad. Of course, I just picked it. It is really strong. Mm, man, that is good. I should take some home. Do that. So last year I had put in my zucchinis all along here. There's a few of the remaining zucchinis. And how cool is that? It's kind of like a gourd. The difference between a zucchini and a gourd though, is a gourd has a really hard shell, whereas a zucchini has a pretty soft shell. So I think that if it rains once or twice, this is just gonna kind of turn to mush. But it looks pretty neat for now. Put a little hole in it, stick it in a tree. And here was our potato patch last year. Now what I need to do is rearrange the whole thing because you don't want to grow your potatoes the next year where they were growing last year. That's really important. Potatoes and tomatoes will get blight and they'll actually give it to each other. So you want to make sure that you're that your, um, those two plants aren't too close together. And if you grow them in the same place, it's more likely to happen again. So once those onions are done, I might move them over there. So that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next episode. Do stay tuned. You can totally follow along on Facebook, Instagram, and a whole bunch of other crazy places. And if you want to support my channel, you can always do that with Patreon. The information is down below, or you can find me there at Scarlet Damon, as well as Instagram and Facebook. It's all under Scarlet Damon or How to Grow a Garden. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo!